Each year, there are about 400 natural disasters affecting nearly 200 million people, and killing tens of thousands of people, mostly in the developing countries. In 2005 alone, there were around 250 conflicts in the world, 74 of them classified as crises, and 24 of them with a higher intensity. We should be concerned. With more than half of the world's population estimated to live in urban areas, and around 1.5 million of these uh, urban populations are expected to live in poor slums of urban cities, mostly in Africa and Asia. The risk to disasters and also crisis will only increase further. Now, in the European Consensus on Humanitarian Aid, it is anticipated that the need for humanitarian assistance will only increase in the short to medium term as a result of demographic, political, security, and environmental factors, including climate change. But no matter what the origin of a disaster or a crisis and their geographical context, there is a common need by all actors involved in all phases of crisis and disaster management, from prevention and preparedness to early warning response, recovery, reconstruction. There is a need for timely, relevant, and reliable information to make decisions, very often within very stringent timescales and under extreme duress. In their report on world disasters published in 2005, the Red Cross Red Crescent stated, Information is as valuable as food, water, and shelter for communities affected by disasters. The right type of information can save lives, livelihoods, and resources. It can also reduce suffering in the aftermath of a disaster or crisis. Now, if you look around us, for example, at Google Earth, Relief Web, online newspapers, we will note that technology, such as Earth observation, is playing an increasing visible role to produce information that should contribute towards providing support to disaster management. But are we hitting the target as far as the type of information on the basis of analysis of Earth observation is concerned with regard to adding value to disaster management? Now, if we look, for example, around us at Relief Web and on online newspapers, we will note today that there are numerous maps produced after each disaster or crisis on the basis alone of analysis of Earth observation data vary from the coarse and medium resolution to very high resolution and very high resolution satellite data. Now, if we were to look at this observation alone, we could conclude that both of the observation technology is playing an increasingly important role within the international disaster and crisis community as one of the sources of information that can support decision making and operations in international disaster and crisis management. Now, there have been a number of players that have been active in the last few years that have contributed and have played an important role in increasing the confidence of the humanitarian community, the decision makers in the donor communities, as well as in the commission and authorities in the affected countries, of the added value that earth observation based information products can contribute towards timely and effective response. I'll just name a few of those players. One of them is the Joint Research Center, another one is the European Satellite. Centre, UNSAT, German DLR, and also a consortia funded under GMS initiative such as Respond. Similarly, Google Earth also is playing a role here. It is demonstrating to the wider public, uh, the general public, and the media the visualization power of high and very high resolution satellite imagery in disaster affected areas. Are we hitting the target? Are there bottlenecks in satellite data acquisition? Are we satisfied with the sort of data needed in order to provide information for disaster management? Is that satellite data getting on time to the right actors who are responsible for producing that information? Are the products, once produced, getting to the right people at the right time? Do we have the right satellite data readily available? Let me get to the first two questions. Satellite data acquisition, what the next? getting satellite data to the right actors. <coughs> now, we will agree that with the launch of recent very high resolution radar, as well as optical satellite data, that the disaster community probably have not had it so good. We are, as more satellites, particularly in the very high resolution uh, areas, are going up. We are reducing the repeat interval period, which is very important, especially for sudden onset disasters like cyclones, storms, and earthquakes. But optical data, we have to remember, is also heavily dependent on weather, cloud coverage. 
information on radar article differ. You need different analysis techniques to extract information from radar. Tasking, data tasking, satellite data tasking ordering in the case of emergencies during a disaster is still a horrendously complex process. We do have a disaster charter. Some would say that maybe it's reserved only to a select set of actors and players in the international disaster community. It does focus only on natural disasters and it's primarily mostly available to those responsibilities in civil protection. We can, and we see that today, we see that already in China, have conflicting tasking requests. High resolution, very high resolution sensors trying to cover small areas with very high resolution satellite data, and at the same time trying to cover a wider part of the affected area with the high resolution sensors. Now, all major humanitarian disasters, we note all you have to do is go to relief work, for example, you will note there's increasing availability of all sorts of different information from different actors within the first few days and up to two to three weeks after the disaster. There are a number of actors that are contributing towards this information production, ranging from UN-related agencies such as UNICEF and other organizations providing support uh, to the UN as well as national space organizations and even the consortia funded under the U.S. program. So there is no shortage of information map-based products for disaster these days. One, one, we only need to examine the number of products that are being made available for the Myanmar disaster alone to realize that quite often producing similar information but based on analysis of different senses. On the computer, today we should be asking ourselves is a disaster done in the humanitarian community overflowed perhaps with confusing or conflicting information that is not validated or not meeting their needs? I come again, once again, to the Myanmar disaster because it's the most recent and the most in the headlines. It confirms the overwhelming amount of products based on Earth observation analysis and made available only in the first few weeks after the event. There were numerous flood detection extent maps produced by at least three different organizations. Initially, they started with MODAS, Lotus, and then moved on to Terrasar X, and then moved on to Cosmos Climate. The most useful detailed damage assessment not based on analysis of very high resolution optical data were not available until 18 days after the first event when it started. Why? Is information production today, is it more data driven because the data happens to be available and easily available to those who are producing the information? And should it be not more user driven, purpose driven in order to really um, um, support effective disaster response. Were the products available at, at the right time? Did they meet the reality on the ground? Were they useful for those involved in humanitarian relief? What about duplication of products? Can anybody today answer those questions with any reliability and certainty? Question. That's a question for the audience. Are those actors engaged today in producing information to support disaster response? Are they equipped with the best? most robust and validated damage assessment methodologies that can handle both very high resolution optical and radar data for all types of natural disasters as well as other disasters. In conclusion, I come back to what I actually started my presentation with. At the core of any disaster or crisis is information. But that information is only valuable if the relevant data needed to produce it is available at the right time to the right people who have responsibilities producing information products. And if the relevant information products can be produced and delivered at the right time, the right people who, are, who have responsibilities in international disaster and crisis management. Today, we can no longer complain about Earth observation infrastructure. It is not the only consideration that we have to be concerned about. It is improving. What we need to do is to facilitate the task group of ordering of satellite data made available to those who are active in information uh, production. We also need to make sure that the community who is engaged in information production has access to the best and most robust science and research results, as well as best practice for damage assessment and mapping for all types of natural disasters, as well as other types of disasters. Thank you very much for your attention.